Hey everybody, Scott from Bless Drywall here in uh, West Houston and Katy, doing a Southern style. So, got a crack here. I'm gonna show you how to fix the easiest way that I know how. It's a real, what I'll call ugly orange peel. So we'll get to that at the back end, but I always try to cut a little slit down the center, separates that tape, separates that joint, gives it a little breathing room. had extreme heat here so these cracks just appeared in the last couple months at this customer's house so don't know if it's the heat that got it back side of this wall is a garage so it's unacclimated scrape it real good try and get in loose off and we're ready to go so I got some plaster of Paris, you can refer to a video, I'll put it in the columns that I mix. Plus three mud and plaster of Paris. So we go half to six. Make sure your mud's nice and full, that's how you get blisters. If you're still seeing paint through your mud prior to the tape, that's how you tend to get blisters. Shoot a six inch knife. I'm applying basically half the knife, I call it a half a six. So, I wanted to tell y'all this particular tape right here is called regular mesh tape, it's self adhesive. I do not use it. If you look real close, there's holes in it. I've fixed thousands of patches that people have used this tape because it doesn't cover the joint. So, you have holes in it, so eventually the mud over the joint will crack. So I've used this several times in other videos. This is fiber fuse. If you use this fiber fuse, as you can see, it's complete. It doesn't have a crease, so you can't really use it on angles unless you roll it. But this says 70% stronger than paper tape, and paper tape is what cracked here. So this is what I use, it's my go-to. And this tape is very, very difficult to blister. So we'll stop there, I'll just wipe that bottom end and then add a little mud over it. You always want to go a little bit past your crack. Make sure if it's starting anywhere it'll, it'll cover. So I like to wipe one side at a time. With this tape, because it might tend to break on you if you go center. So if you do do one side at a time and then go center, it'll lay down real nice. Same thing, I'll wipe that bottom first, then the top. So I'm putting all my pressure on the bottom and not just center laying it down flat. So here we go. So this is a butt joint. The sheets line up horizontally where they line up together. It's called a butt joint. So we're just gonna put a knife on there, and as you can see, it's rocking. So we're gonna have to put some mud on there, more than just 12 inches. So I'll overlap to this side of the tape when I'm putting that side and then this side as the other way. So essentially it'd be 22 inches of mud. Fill that in real good, both sides. So here I'm gonna put 12 inches of mud. So I'm gonna come down where that 12 will touch on the next joint so we have a nice transition. Alright, so we're going full here. I'll do my feather edge. I'm doing almost all my videos. Just touch the left side. Only about two inches of that six is touching. It's what we call feather edge. All the way around. So if you angle in, it'll push that mud in. So I'll start here and then get up. 12 down the center. Get it nice and full to that ceiling. Straight down. 
So I'll feather it again with the 12, and I'm just gonna lay that edge down right in the middle between the edge and the center of the joint. So what that does is your center is the hump. So you're building that mud out in the middle of both sides. And this is plaster and once it sets up, we're gonna be able to rake it, which I'll show y'all. Now this is a flat, it was a flat at one point. But right now, as you can see, it's not, but really it's that low side that's bad. So I'll do a little scraping on the bottom there, kind of help with your mud. I'm not going to go quite center. I'll go a little bit low, just over the tape. So majority of the mud's going to be on the bottom of the seam. Now every joint's different. This used to be a flat, but now that it's moved, there's a bit of a hump in it. There's no lights above here, nothing shining down, so we'll just go a little bit under, give it a little extra cushion on the bottom. The same thing, feather edge. So I'll put all my pressure on the top and let that mud kind of roll down. I don't have any edge on the top, very slight, and I'm just going to feather edge that a little bit. Kind of leave that mud in there. So most of your mud is on the bottom of that joint. So this will take a few minutes to set up, 10 to 15 minutes. I mix it really loose. Another thing with the plaster, if you put a little more water in it and loosen up your mud, uh, when you add the mud to mix it, and you can refer to the other video, um, you get a little more time out of it. So we'll let this set up, we'll come back, and we'll go from there. All right, we're back. So it's roughly 10 minutes. Over this, this is an eggshell paint right here. A lot of times this plaster will take a little longer. It might even be 15 minutes. And it's still a little tacky. But because it's not completely dry, I'm able to sponge these edges. So before I even skim it, I'm going to sponge these edges down. This is a really rough texture. If you look at it, it's kind of protrusive. It's sticking out. So really important when you're doing patchwork uh, that you don't have that edge. Now you can use regular mud. I use the plaster because I've been doing it for 20 something years and that's what I'm used to and I'm able to, to get it right and move through it quickly. Plaster moves pretty fast if you don't mix it right. So you can use 45 minute, I prefer Proform. Um, USG is a little gummy and it takes longer to dry but 45 minutes if you mix it just straight with mud, get it to your consistency, you'll get about 35, 40 minutes out of it and when it dries, it'll, it'll lock up. So same principle, it has plaster repairs in it but as repairman, we're gonna move quickly and my boy Eli is fixing to do this texture. He's a five minute man, he loves five minute. I think five minutes a little more porous than plaster and you don't get near as much time because you got five minutes and that's it. <laughs> so I'm gonna get all these edges sponged before I do my raking. So you just wanna get, you don't wanna get into the mud too much but you wanna make sure you get a good blend on that edge and then when we skim, we're gonna stay out of that. And just stay in the middle. So this is just a regular, I guess, grout sponge we use it for drywall. It's a little damp, not too wet. You don't want it running down the wall. So as you can see, we got a real clean transition now. So we still got all these imperfections. So as you can see, we're kind of a little bumpy. I left that lap mark right there, and I've got a few lines, a little cut bubbles and stuff. So we're just gonna rake. Now a lot of times this will cheese, which it is doing right now, over this eggshell. When that happens, you got to be really, really careful and really base it on your skim. For some reason it reacts differently over an eggshell. Over a flat, you don't have that problem. But you want to kind of mold this the best you can. And we'll leave the main detail. As you can see, I'm cheesing. I don't know why. Over eggshell, it does that, so over certain paints. So we're gonna be real careful. And we might cut this and wait just a little bit and let this tack up a little bit more. I'll be right back. All right, we're back again. So a lot, like I said, with the eggshell, when you put plaster over eggshell, sometimes we had this problem where you see it kind of cheese up and I was trying to rake it out. 
but the little bit of leftover I had sitting on the counter over there was rock hard in 10 minutes. This is probably about 20 minutes. We actually put a fan on to help set up. So hopefully we're good without the cheese. I'm gonna rake this thing out real clean. I'll take all the excess that I rake and just fill all these pit holes in a little bit. So we're gonna put a real, real tight skim on it and then spray it immediately. So you don't want the skim to be too big. So you want it just big enough really to just kind of, I call wax on, wax off. So this plaster doesn't shrink, so it's it's a float. The skim coat's just gonna clean it up. And now the mud's set up enough where I can lay this down and rake it. So essentially, if you're doing regular mud, uh, what I'm doing here with my knife would be what you would do with a sample. But as being professionals, we're trying to get in and out. We're not gonna come back tomorrow to sand it. So we're gonna get as pretty as we can right now so we can finish the job and go to the next one. So the little bit of excess that I pull, I'm just putting it right back on and filling all my indentions. It's not a lot of pressure. And it's, I call it a high knife. Just lift your knife up real high. with kind of medium pressure, not a lot of pressure. So now we've got everything laid in. I'm gonna do what I call an inside skim. So this is just regular plus three mud. Straight out the box, it's a little thick, so I'll put a little water in it to kind of loosen it up. And I use my six to go on that edge. I'm gonna stay about a half inch inside that patch. So this is my plaster edge. It's already spun, just nice. And then I'm going to stay inside that edge to give me a nice even inside. So you can put on with a 12. I like to just put it on with a 6 so I can directionalize and put it exactly where I want it. And you feather edge again. Stay inside the mud. It's a heavy texture, so you get bumps. I'm just filling everything in right now. So now we've got a full coat of regular mud. And I do what I call a six down the center. Take that six and lay down that center completely, nice and tight. All the way through. And then I'm gonna wipe a 12, a tight 12 on both sides. So you wanna get that corner right. And I'm basically wiping it all off. All I'm doing is staining it. Make sure you have no lines of trash. So when we spray this, it's going to cover a little bit of imperfection that you might see. So now we've got it nice and tight. If you've got any edges, just roll that edge in. And I'll probably put a sponge on that. Same thing here. Stay inside that edge. inside that mud and I'm feather edging everything in the middle so we don't leave an edge. So on the bottom you got gravity so I'll put that knife up a little bit to keep it pushed up not falling down. So you can feather edge into it get your seam nice and straight. Now we have no lap marks. I've got a little bit of edge and I'm just gonna to touch that with that sponge. You can see just a little slight edge. Just touch that up a little bit. The wet mud will leave streaks, so you wanna kinda of stay out of it and just on that bottom edge, just a little bit. And over here we had a little bit. 
So I'm gonna get my boy Eli in here. He uses a different hopper and he's just got a little pancake compressor. In my other videos, I've got my big rig. But for the smaller stuff, he has perfected using what you guys probably will have. Eli? All right, so this is uh, just a simple hopper. Um, this is just for the air blow, how much air pressure you want it. Uh, this kind of tip, it will shoot different kind of testers, either splat and drag, big heavy, splatter. Uh, you re reduce the how much mud you want from out of the tip from here. So on this one, it's just kind of all the kind of texture. We're gonna go medium air. We're gonna go closest to the middle, and we go from there. We just shoot it first, try to little bit. Don't put the pressure too much on the trigger. You put the pressure on the trigger all the way. It's gonna blow more texture. So we go stop first, and we go from there. As you can see, we need a little bit more air. want to go too much and you want to kind of go on that outside of the edge so you help blend into here so this is really sporadic the original texture so we're not going to fill it in as much as you normally would it's based on it's just based on whatever the texture is is how you're going to put uh you know how much mud you're going to put on the wall so there it is this guy is done we're pushing real close right now to a thousand subscriptions. Please subscribe. If there's anything in particular you'd like to see, let us know. Triple S, Southern Style.